Hi everyone, I am Shongar and welcome back to this lecture series for C++. So in today's lecture, we are going to have a look at data types and operators, okay, which are there in the C++. So I am going to give a brief introduction about the type of operators that are available and the data types that are available. And then we are going to uh, make a simple calculator program to see how to use these data types and operators, all right. And we will also have a look at if else statement in the calculator program <coughs> uh, in the upcoming lectures. All right. So about data types and operators. So uh, basically, these these are the flowchart. This is a flowchart for the types of data which are available in C++. That is primitive and non-primitive. Okay. So you have seen that we have used the data types like in care. Uh, long, flow, double, all these, all these are the types of data which are available. Okay, for character we use char, for integer type of integer we can use byte, short, int, long. These are the different types for float or double. Okay, these kind of data types we can use. So we will see uh, one by one what these types means. Okay, so here byte, a byte data type has size of one byte and stores number from this range. <clears throat> to this range okay so let's say you uh, want to have a data type which can store number for, for a greater range so you can use short or you can use integer all right it's up to you uh, you can see the ranges here for integer the size is greater but the range is also very high okay and for long the size again increases and the range increases as well you can see it's uh, very very high range all right so uh, similarly, the same is the case for float. This is the decimal numbers. So float can store six to de uh, seven decimal digits. Double can store 15 decimal digits. Okay, Boolean stores true or false value. Character takes two bytes and stores the character. That is we use in the single inverted comma and then we specify the characters. Okay, so these were the data types which are available in C++. Now we will see the operators in C++ that is arithmetic, bitwise, relational, boolean, uh, assignment operator and question mark operator. Okay. So these are the arithmetic operators that is the basic operators plus minus divide multiply. Okay. Modulus uh, plus equal to minus equal to. All right. These are the arithmetic operators. These are the bitwise operators that is for bitwise not, bitwise and, bitwise or. Okay. These are basically performed for bitwise operation, the XOR, XNOR and all that operations that is performed on binary numbers. These are relational operators that is used for comparing that is equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than, equal to. Similarly, these are the Boolean logical operators that is logical AND, logical OR, logical XOR and OR equal to, not equal to. Okay. And this is the finally uh, term, uh, question mark operator that is if then else statement. For example, you give the expression one, okay, then question mark, then expression two, then colon, then expression three, okay. That is if this expression one is true, then this expression two condition is uh, used, else this expression three condition is used. So now we are going to see how to use these operators inside a program so this was a brief introduction we are going to see uh, the use of some operators so i'm going to create a new project so here we are with our project and you can see here okay let me just increase the size first yeah so now uh, let's start with arithmetic operators. We are going to define two integers that is int a is equal to five comma b is equal to six. All right. So we are going to see out a plus b, a minus b, a into b and a divided by b. All right. Okay. Uh, let's just make it let's just make this as 5 and this as 15 because we are declaring integers so that divide operation can take place otherwise we have to declare it as float so when i compile the program 
there are no errors and we will see the output okay i have compiled again yeah so this is the output okay let's just uh, include some space in that as well because it is not able to differentiate now it will be easier for us to understand what we are getting as the output okay so let us run the program and see you can see here a plus b we get 15 plus 5 20 uh, a minus b we get 10 okay a into b we get 75 and a divided by b we get 3 all right we can add more operations like the modulus operation all right so let's add modulus as well a mod b okay so now let us run the program again and we can see we uh, do a mod b the remainder is zero so that's why we get zero as the remainder all right so now uh, let us uh, uh, use an operator that was plus equal to okay so basically plus equal to or minus equal to these are the shorthands for c plus plus that is uh, let's say I write a plus <coughs> equal to 10 all right so this will actually means a is equal to a plus 10 all right so now here I am going to print the new value of a so let us see now you can see here initially a was 15 but when I write a plus is equal to 10, that is uh, 15 plus 10. So a becomes 25. So uh, the new latest value of a is 25. Okay. Similar is the case for minus. Okay. Let me just include a new line here. Yeah. Similar is the case for minus. If I say a minus equal to 10, so it will mean a equal to a minus 10. So let us just compile the program and we can see that the initial value of a was 15 and 15 minus 10 is 5 so the new value is 5 all right so this is how we can use the arithmetic operators okay you can uh, similarly try the other operators as well okay now coming to the relational operators that is equal to not equal to greater less than and all all right so now uh, let us make a condition that is if a equal to equal to 15 then we need to see out and we are uh, printing a is 15 all right so let us see now it is not printing because we have changed the value of a that is a uh, now the a becomes 5 so a is not 15 all right so uh, let me just add an else condition also else not 15 all right so now it should print not 15 so you can see here we have in the output not 15 similarly we can have uh, other variables okay uh, other operators so if a is not equal to 15 then we can directly say here is not 15 that is exclamation equal to okay uh, so that is for not equal to so let's just run the program now we are getting the output a is not 15 all right similarly we can use other operators that is uh, let's say greater than or equal to 15 then we will print a is 15 all right so now when we run the program we do not get a is 15 because the condition is not satisfied because a is less than 15 and not equal to 15 okay when we do a is less than equal to 15 then we should be getting the um, c out because the value of a is 5 okay which is less than 15 so a is 15 we are getting the output okay so this is how we use the operators, we use logical operator, relational operators and we use arithmetic operators. 
so now we are going to have a look at bitwise operator all right so uh, all the bitwise operators uh, you will going to see that bitwise operators looks uh, the same way like logical operators but what is actually happening in the memory that uh, all these uh, these numbers that is a equal to 15 b equal to 5 these are converted uh, to binary okay and then bitwise operations takes place for example uh, let's say a is 12 okay and b is 5 so when we write it in binary the value of 12 it is equal to all right similarly the value of 5 is equal to one zero one yeah so these are the value of 12 and 5 and when let's say we add 12 plus 5 so what will actually be added is like this this will be added to okay so this will be added and we are going to get uh, the answer like this okay we will be getting 1 0 1 yeah so we will be getting this as the answer and uh, this is for okay we, we won't be getting this uh, uh, which is equal to 17 all right so uh, this is actually happening inside the memory of the computer and uh, but we are not going to see all this because that is happening inside memory all right so now what we are going to do is we are going to use the bitwise operations to add these two so now uh, we have the integers a and b and we are going to uh, use c out let's say we use a and b or a or b all right so we use a or b all right this is the symbol for or and let us just compile the program Okay, uh, yeah, I forgot this. So it is now compiled successfully. And you can see it is performing the OR operations between these two. All right. So if we see uh, both of these, uh, we can verify from using the OR operators between these two numbers that is uh, the value of 12 in binary was 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 all right and then the value of 5 was 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 all right so when we use when we do the or operations what will happen uh, we will get 0 1 will be 1 okay so let's see uh, uh, we will get 0 1 1 then this will be 0 okay then 1 1 we will get 1 1 0 again we are going to get 1 and then these will be 0 okay so that is uh, we are getting uh, this will be equivalent to 13 that is we are getting 13 on doing the OR operation. So when we see the result, we are getting 13. All right. So this is how bitwise operations works. That is bitwise OR, bitwise AND. And similarly, all the other bitwise operators, that is NOT, left shift, right shift and all that operations. Okay. Similarly, these are uh, the Boolean logical operators, which works on Boolean operands. Okay. Uh, 
uh, that is whether to see if uh, any operand is true or not uh, we can use the boolean operations so for that we are going to declare it declare some boolean that is bool a is equal to 1 okay b is equal to 0 so okay uh, yeah wait now a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0 so let's say i am going to use the boolean operator and i am going to print out a or b all right so now it should return one value because one or zero is one so let's compile the program and see if we are getting the one as the output we can see here we get one as the output so this is for the boolean operators similarly we can perform a and b and we should get zero as the output So let us see and we are getting 0 as the output all right so now uh, this was the boolean operation logical operations all right and now we are going to see how to use the question mark and semicolon this if then else statement all right so basically the syntax was expression 1 question mark expression 2 colon expression 3 okay that is the condition if expression 1 is true then uh, expression 2 will be the answer otherwise expression 3 will be the answer that is uh, the expression 1 2 and 3 or basically we can say it as condition that is uh, if condition is true then exp this expression is going to be the answer otherwise this expression is going to be the answer all right so uh, let us see uh, we have declared int a is equal to 1 all right so now i am going to uh, write the condition let's say i write here a is greater than 0 all right so if a is equal to uh, is greater than 0 then what we need to print okay not less than greater than greater than 0 else we are going to print less than 0 okay so let me just save it and let's run the program okay so there are no errors so let's just see the output okay uh, yeah we are not getting the output because we didn't store it in uh, the another variable so we are going to uh, use a string that is the result and now we are going to store this value here so that uh, this can be printed all right so we have stored the value here and now we are going to print the value of result all right so let's just run the program and there are no errors so let's see uh, we are getting the output that is greater than zero so this is how uh, the ternary operator works this is called a ternary operator okay and these are all about data types and operators so this is how uh, different types of operators actually work so in upcoming videos we are going to uh, move towards the if else statements switch statements and we are going to see uh, different type of loops okay and we are going to use all these basics in those lectures as well Alright, so this is all for this video. See you guys in the next video.